Alrighty, well, first off, happy 4th of July 2017, everybody. Now, we're getting back to working on the Caterpillar generator set. Got one piston pulled out already. And uh, I'm going to show you what uh, my process is going to be for pulling out the second one. The pistons came out, well, this first piston came out without too much difficulty. Let me show you. Okay, well, here's number four piston and connecting rod. Doesn't look all that bad, really. There's some scuffing on the side here, but not all that much at all. For the most part, all the rings are freed up. This one little ring is stuck here, but the compression rings are free. This uh, top compression ring is stuck on this side. But this is how it came out of the bore. Doesn't look all that bad. Definitely, uh, I would like to reuse it, of course. I haven't checked for things like wrist pin wear or anything like that, but and there's still clear machine marks on the skirts of the piston. This is a little bit, a little bit of scuffing here as well. This is the piston uh, number four, which had the large pit in the crown. You see it right there, in there. I'm going to take this to a few uh, specialty welders that I know and uh, see if, depending on if they can identify the type of aluminum, if they would recommend perhaps just uh, cleaning and filling in these pits and then regrinding it to the dish shape. We'll see. The end of the rod looks okay. Some rust, but nothing uh, detrimental. So, in my last video on this engine, you saw the, um, I, could, I was able to get the crankshaft turning. Once I could turn the crankshaft, I rotated it so that the three and four um, connecting rod throws were at bottom dead center. You can see there's number three connecting rod still hanging there. Pulled out the uh, rod cap bolts. And pretty much my procedure was for removing this piston, taking a wood block, a 4x4, putting it up in the bore there. Let me hop up on the trailer. And uh, giving it a couple whacks with a hammer, driving the piston down the bore slightly, just enough to budge it to make sure it would move. And then taking my uh, about 8, 10 foot long two by two by quarter inch wall square tube here and a piece of wood across the uh, to bridge the uh, connecting rod and uh, just using it on this surface here this inspection port to uh, act as a lever to push the piston and rod up and out of the bore I was a little bit concerned with a applying that much force to this area of the casting for fear of breaking it but this is a solid one inch square casting here on the crankcase and then you've got actually it's bigger than one inch it's all the way down to here just oh, it's even bigger yeah, it's and then you got the oil pan reinforcement and I wasn't I didn't have to exert too much force on the end of the lever to actually get it to move so let me see if I can show you the bore so here's number four cylinder bore and it's state with I just removed the piston out of it have not even tried to clean it yet I don't know. you can see the dry spots on there I had this thing soaking for a while and there are still points where no lubrication got to but it did slide out so I'm gonna clean that up 
see how bad it is. See how drastic the pitting really is. Where the rings were feels perfect. Below that I feel a little ridge. So, we'll see. At the very least I imagine the uh, sleeves will have to be re removed, but you never know. So, I'm going to proceed to pull number three. Well, if the first one came out easy, it makes sense that the second one wouldn't. With my uh, 10 foot bar on there, my uh, pry bar, piece of tubing, uh, the number three piston would not even budge. I, not even at all. So I, I put some dead weight on the bar here and went up on the uh, block and tapped the piston a few times with a hammer and a 4x4 four four to maybe try to, try to jar it loose. That had no uh, effect, so I'm going to go with the uh, heat technique here. Right now I've got some fuel oil in the cylinder burning away to try to uh, maybe heat the piston up a little bit, heat the sleeve up. Try to let that uh, uh, fuel oil maybe work its way down between the piston and the sleeve a bit. I'll let that burn out and give her, a, give her another try. One thing I didn't mention uh, in this whole process is a step that I took, which was after cleaning the uh, the loose rust out of the top of the uh, bore uh, from what you know what was sitting on the piston, I filled each bore up with um, a, a rust remover, like Miracle rust remover product. Uh, I forget what it was called now. Metal Rescue is what it was, what it was called. And uh, it really did uh, remove the surface rust on each cylinder. Um, it, it brought it down to, to what was bare, bare steel or bare iron, which was nice because it's not a um, it's not an abrasive you know technique for rust removal. So I figured it would come in handy, and it, in this case, it, it might work its way down around the rings and break the rust bond between the rings and the uh, sleeve. Uh, interestingly enough. The number four piston, which came out easily, um, after filling that with the Metal Rescue product, uh, over the course of about two hours, almost all of it uh, leaked down around the piston and came out down around the in the crankcase, uh, which I guess it turns out really helped the setup because it was actually migrating down around the piston and the rings. Whereas number three here did not. Number three might have dropped a quarter inch level wise or so, but um, it uh, it didn't uh, penetrate down around the ring. So number three might be a little bit more difficult. Ironically, the number three cylinder bore looked better after the uh, metal rescue product had done its job. So there's probably still another inch worth of fuel oil to burn out of there. So I can't tell if the block is warm from the sun beating on it, or warm because of the fire. Uh, definitely warmer here, so. Let that percolate a while. I don't think it's going to do any damage. It may, it may compromise the upper sleeve seal, but I imagine I'm going to be pulling, I'm going to pull the sleeves anyway, so. You know, if I compromise the sleeve seals with this endeavor of trying to free the piston, I'm not that bothered. Because they've got to come out anyway. So. We'll see how it goes. Well, it's late in the day and it's time to make an end of this video. And I failed. I didn't manage to get the number three piston out. I couldn't even get it to budge. I had my whole weight on the end of that uh, 10 foot bar, didn't move at all, so I put an extension on that 10 foot bar and it still wouldn't move. And I'm not really, uh, once you get longer than 10 foot on a pry bar, it kind of gets unsafe. So the next plan is to use a uh, hydraulic porta power type tool. I, uh, I purchased a small miniature jack 
uh, today. It should, you know, off of eBay. It should be here next week. Uh, small enough that I'll be able to set it inside. Um, I'll block up some wood on the crank throw and put a place, piece of plate steel to bridge the connecting rod. Big end. Probably going to need to be like a half inch or five eighths plate. The ram is small, it only has a 7 16th inch stroke, it's rated at 20 tons, but I don't think it's going to take that to move it. I'm just not able to get enough leverage with my pry bar, even with that long length handle. The fulcrum is right here, and the the work is over here, so and that's, that's about 8 inches difference, so although my lever is long, I, I lose a lot of effective force with uh, the fulcrum being five, uh, eight inches from the uh, work. So, like I said, fail for the day. I'll give you a shot. Here's the uh, inside of number four here. I didn't even bother to clean anything yet. You've already seen up in here. I'm surprised that I couldn't even get uh, number three to budge, even at, uh, after that, uh, cooking, cooking it with that uh, oil couldn't even get it to budge at all so we'll leave that for another day I've got to get ready for the Jacktown show uh, it's about a week away really so hope to see anybody up there see the regulars up there alright thanks for watching